This first unit is going to take a look at voting theory and weighted voting and kind of how each of those systems can work in a search for a system that is the most fair to all the voters and their desires. There's actually lots of different ways to hold elections for a preferred candidate or a preferred location or a preferred meeting time or a preferred option. And we're going to take a look at several of those in the next couple videos. The first one we're going to take a look at is called plurality. We're going to answer this question, how does voting work specifically in the context of what's called plurality? as we look at probably the most common type of voting, at least in the United States, which basically says in plurality voting that the most votes wins. And I'll even say most first place votes wins. And to set this up, we're going to use what is called a preference ballot a lot in this unit. And what a preference ballot does is the voter will rank their choices in order of preference. So for example, we have some big national convention. And the committee has to decide on the dessert choice for the convention. They've got three options. They've got to choose between cake, ice cream, or pie. And so what they're going to do is they're going to each rank their options as to what's the first choice, second choice, and third choice. And let's say there's several people who are going to vote. We'll call them person A, person B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and I. So all these people are going to rank their first, second, and third choices. Let's say Ake wants cake, then ice cream, then pie. B's first preference is ice cream, then cake, then pie. C wants ice cream, then pie, then cake. D wants cake, then ice cream, then pie. E wants ice cream, pie, and then cake. F prefers pie, then cake, then ice cream. G wants cake, then ice cream, then pie. H wants ice cream, then cake, then pie. And I wants pie, then cake, and then ice cream. So they've rank ordered their votes for each of the choices, first, second, and third preference. That is called a preference ballot. Now, a preference ballot is often very difficult to read, especially if we have hundreds or even thousands of votes. So quite often, we'll summarize the results in what's called a preference schedule. With our preference schedule, we'll take a look at our first choice, second choice, and third choice. But this time, we're going to group common results together. So what you might notice is when I see person A voted CIP, 
there's another CIP from D and another CIP from G. So that means really I've got three people who have voted CIP. In the next column, I see ICP. There's another ICP over at the end. So that result happened twice. So twice we've had people vote ICP. Continuing down then, we see IPC, IPC. So IPC has also happened twice. And then finally, we see PCI. PCI has happened twice. And so for our last row, PCI. And we've got a preference schedule then that shows us how many times each result came up in the election. And a preference schedule is actually much easier to read when we're trying to figure out who our actual winner is, especially if there were 100 or 1,000 votes to keep track of. This is going to make it much easier to see. One nice thing is if we add across the top 3 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2, we see 9 votes total. We see how many people have voted. And now we can start talking about who actually won this election. And we said at the beginning we're going to use what's familiar in the United States as the plurality method. Which basically says most first place votes wins. And if there's a tie, we'll do some type of runoff election. So looking at our dessert choices, if we look at cake, which was the first option, cake was number one for three people. So cake gets three votes. Ice cream. Ice cream was number one in both these center columns. So we're going to get the two votes plus the two votes equals four votes total. And finally, the pie was the preferred result of only two voters. And so if we put that all together, four votes is the most. And therefore, ice cream wins. Ice cream got the most first place votes, so therefore ice cream is the best choice for dessert, right? Well, that begs a question. Is it really that simple? Is this result really something that's reliable that we can say is fair to the voters and their preference? Well, to help us decide this, throughout this unit, we're going to take a look at several fairness criteria. And these are simply statements that seem like they should be true. in a fair election. And one of the biggest issues when it comes to fairness criteria is the Condorcet criterion. Which says if one choice is preferred in every two-way matchup. That choice 
should be the winner. We call that the Condorcet winner. The idea here is if person A is running for some election, and A could beat B, and A could beat C, it would make sense in the election between all three, A should win. But is that always the case? Well, let's take a look at our dessert choices. and see if that's the case. What I've done here is I've copied down our preference schedule for us to look at all on one screen. And we're going to do a head-to-head -head comparison for all of the results. First head-to-head -head comparison we're going to look at is ice cream versus pie. And we're going to see who wins between ice cream and pie and tally the votes. Well, first we see ice cream has beaten pie in this first column. So we're going to give ice cream those three votes. We see ice cream beats pie in the second column. So we'll give ice cream those two votes. We see ice cream beats pie in the next column. So we'll give ice cream those two votes. But in the last column, we see pie has beaten ice cream. So pi gets those last two votes. So in this head-to-head -head matchup, ice cream seems to have one versus pi. Let's do another head-to-head -head matchup, though. And let's see who wins in the next head-to-head -head matchup. Let's compare ice cream versus cake. And we'll see who, how people would vote if it was just ice cream versus cake. Well, in the first column, we see cake beats ice cream. So we'll give cake those three votes. Then we see ice cream beats cake. So we'll give ice cream those two votes. Then ice cream beats cake. So ice cream gets two votes. Then cake beats ice cream. So cake gets two votes. And wait a minute, what happened here? Cake seems to have beaten ice cream in a head-to-head -head matchup. Well, let's see if cake can also beat pie. We haven't compared cake versus pie. Cake versus pie. And when we do, cake beats pie. So cake gets three votes. Cake beats pie. Cake gets two votes. Pi beats cake, so pi gets two votes. And pi beats cake, so pi gets two votes. But still, we find out that cake has one. Notice what's happened here is with plurality, ice cream one even though 5 out of 9, which is a majority, looking at this middle row, 5 out of 9 people, a majority of them, would prefer cake over ice cream. We say cake is the Condorcet winner, meaning if it was just a head-to-head, -head, one on one matchup, cake beats ice cream and cake beats pie. But when all three run together, ice cream comes out the winner in the plurality method. That seems to be a problem with plurality voting. We're going to look at other voting methods that might address this issue. But for now, it's time for you to practice some of these plurality voting elections, see if you can identify winners and interpret these 
preference schedules. We'll see you in the next video.